Okay, so I've assembled the Corvus Cabal. Um, a little bit fiddly to put together. Um, they're quite frail guys. Um, I know I'm likely to break some spears at some stage. Uh, I think the worst bit has got to be the raven on this guy here. Just one contact area on that severed head there. Right at the back. Look how tiny those guys are. Right, so rather than my <laughs> usual burly space marines, quite chunky, uh, these guys are a bit fiddly. So I've assembled them all. I've put some of the GW technical uh, textured paint down. And I've sprayed it all with just a basic cheapy Poundland rattle can of grey. So <clears throat> I will start laying some colours down. So I've mixed up uh, a little pot of a concoction. And I'm going to blast it with the airbrush. All right. Okay, I've got the right mix. Because I'm not using airbrush paint, I'm using a regular paint to make an airbrush paint. So I'm going to lay down some base colours, nice and gentle. Use your trick with airbrush, get in the harder reach places first. Like between his legs. Yeah, that's right. You know me, it's the first place I go for. Um, just like underneath his arms. Do the easy stuff at the end. Nice and even, nice and smooth. A bit of a low pressure. A fairly even coverage. So it's a bit wet, so you can't really see. But that is a very dark turquoise that I'm going with. So I'm using a Vallejo. Uh, what is the official colour I'm using? So I'm using Vallejo Air Black with, this is an old, old paint as you can tell, a game colour hallucinogen turquoise maybe? Which makes sense because I did say I was using a turquoise. It looks like a turquoise to me. So I'll rip through all of these guys with the airbrush. I'm still getting in the hard reach places. So I could have easily because most of this model quite dark colours other than the skin. I could have painted the, the blacks black. But the ravens are black. I always could bear like the ravens. But I am um, I like to be off black. It probably is never any true true black in a model. Black does reflect light quite a bit. I mean, you can use a very dark, dark turquoise, or you can use greys. Really missed his ankle then, didn't I? Right, I'm going to do the lot and come back to you again. Okay, so once the quite dark turquoise has dried, like so. I'm going to pick up all the recesses with a little bit of non oil. So give it a bit of a shake. And give this a wash all over. So even though it's a shade, I want to cover the whole damn thing. So get in every little nook and cranny first, like you do when you're airbrushing. I'm covering the whole of the model. So I want to make the top coat slightly darker, because believe it or not, it's still actually quite turquoise. 
but what I really want is it to sit nicely in the recesses, giving me some shade. Yeah, really loving the Corvus Cabal box. My first Warcry box I've painted, other than the terrain. And if you uh, want to check out how I painted the core box terrain, I'll put up a little link below. Or you can just check out our previous videos on our YouTube channel. Easily find it on there. So yeah, splatting this stuff on. Fairly heavy. On everything. And hopefully when they dry, it's picked out all the recesses. As well as, as, well as making the turquoise slightly darker. Because I could easily paint blank, black, but what I want to do is make it a very dark turquoise. So it's a bit more eye catching than just black. Black's not really going to stand out, is it? So just wash my brush off and uh, I'll show you what I've done so far is all nine. They're drying nicely. Come back when they're fully dry and show you what the null oil wash can do. So what I'm doing at this stage is dry brushing, especially on the raised areas of the feathers here. Picking out the more prominent areas, but certainly dry brushing overall with GW Celestria Grey. So this grey contains a little bit of a blue in there, so it's not too not too striking if it was a very light grey like a whitish grey it would pop too much, so you want a nice blend like in there and that's what I'm going to do with the other models so you get your model get your little bit of celestial grey on your brush so with a dry brush, as per usual, using a makeup brush and on the tile, get the majority of the paint out. So working it in the brush, not just on the tip. So it just about picks up the raised edges. So you shouldn't be able to see too much on your hand at any time. So like that's so it just picking it up there. All right. So an all over dry brush initially. As you can see it's picking out the raised areas. And the feathers exaggerate it a little bit. Try only doing it one direction initially. See what it's coming out like. A bit of feathers there. And most of these models have a nice shaggy little bit back there. Almost like a, a mane of feathers, really, I suppose. If that makes any sense. He's crazy. Even dry brushing the weapon, because that will help later on when painting the weapon. Kind of like a, a zenith highlight. So, making all these feathers pop. But giving a general dry brush to the whole model. Because even though I haven't done the skin yet, it kind of gives it, like I said, a bit of a zenith highlight, zenithal highlight. Right. Reasonably happy with that. the next piece.
and also be very very wary of these models are quite brittle so I haven't broken any yet but it could happen so once again the little ruffle feathers there, little plume of feathers Going off camera there. Got in the zone, wasn't looking what I was doing. Secret is to pick up on everything, but I make it look too obvious. You want to be eye catching. You don't want to be too dark. You also don't want to be too obvious. All right. Okay, two more to go. I will come back after this process is done. So now I'm going to paint the flesh tones um, in the box. Uh, oh, sorry, on the box artwork, the skin's quite pale. And I've experimented with a few different skin tones, and I like the idea of like a Native American kind of skin tone. Uh, I don't know why it appealed to me. I was just thinking feathers, maybe Indians, that kind of thing. Um, like the old school cowboys and Indian style. So I was thinking starting with Bugmans, then a bit of Talon flesh, and then maybe very, very light edge highlights of Rakar Flesh. So on the box are, so start with Rakar Flesh and add um, the Reichland Flesh Light, Flesh Shade, wow. Um, and then back to the, the Reichland and work your way up from there. But that's still quite pale for me, uh, for what I wanted anyway. So, get your paintbrush, get your paint pot, give it a damn good shake, always shake your paint. And a little bit of water on the brush and using the tile as I like to use a tile you can always use a wet pad if you wanted to so I'm going to go with um, the skin is going to have uh, two thin coats so the first one over dark probably won't cover terribly well so all the more reason to use two. And just cover as much of the skin as you can with one thin coat. Once dry, go back to it. So yeah, this is the colour that I kind of want to go with. slightly darker than the box art. Um, I was thinking a two pale and the skull mask will kind of get lost in it. So I want a little bit of a difference between skull masks of the raven and the skin. Making sure I get all the little bits here. Taking my time, it's trying to be as neat as possible. Now, some people do start with skin tones first before they do any other colours. Uh, I do sometimes, uh, but I thought it was going to be quite a lot of the same colour. Um, so the trousers and the feathers are going to be the same colour. So I'll carry on painting this and I'll come back. Once he's had two coats, and we'll start with the next layer. Okay, so once you've got the Bugman's Glow, uh, two coats, ideally two thin coats, on the flesh. Nice and even. We start with the Talon flesh on the raised areas. 
So, giving the pot of paint a good shake, using your tile or your wet palette, whatever you like to use, a little bit of paint on there, a little bit of medium or water, whatever's preferable for yourself, and make sure you pull the brush, drag it on the tile to work a nice point. Try not to get too far up the actual brush itself. Right, then just highlight the raised areas. So the ankle here, obviously the highest point would be the, the heel itself. So I'll just put a little bit on there. Down the foot there. So this really is just the raised sections. A bit of the caliper there. There we go. You probably find you need two coats. Give it for a second. Go on to the other foot. So all the raised areas, so I'll be going for a bit of that as well, slightly higher up. Working that point on a tile, so put to one side and show you, it's a nice point on the brush, getting the toes. Anything raised, just like that. So the muscle itself is good definition there. So I'll just get the raised areas. The back of the hand should be fairly easy. Get those knuckles. and cover the whole model and I'll come back and show you what I've done okay next we have the Rakar flesh to put on now this is only the highest highest highlights uh, I'll be putting it on like the knuckles things like that and later on where the little hook is going into the peck there I'll put a bit of uh, probably crimson wash or something around the area so it looks like the flesh is a bit pink and wounded and possibly similar colour for the nipple but it's a rack of flesh time so give your paint a shake make sure your brush is nice and clean this stage it really is the highest of highlights So you probably just get the tiniest little bit on your brush and then we'll go for the knuckles. So we need just a little dab. So you see the knuckles are raised. And there's different ways of doing flesh, but this is the style that I want to do for these particular guys. Too, too pale. Want to stand out a little bit on the table for once. 
There's going to be a lot of dark colours on this model when it's finished. So I'm hoping that the skin... Sharp a little bit, do a little bit of a nipple there. It's not looking too bad. Now I've just got to do it with the rest of the nine models. Okay, I'll do that. And then we'll start with something else. Quite possibly the leather straps. Okay, so for the leather strapping, I'm going with some Games Workshop Scorched Brown. So, a bit on tile, get to a nice point. This is when we start picking out all the detail. This strap here. If you can see that on the camera. I'll be doing this piece here, fire it all around the model. It's taking your time. And this is just going to be the first coat of two. Also, it would be easier to paint the model when it's in bits, but these Warcry models are quite fiddly to put together. Okay, so once you've done all the brown strapping and you're happy with it, next you need to do the edge highlights of the brown leather. So, slightly lighter brown, as per usual, give it a, a damn good shake. And I'm just trying to get a bit of a point on the brush. So I'm not getting a lot on the brush, not loading up too much. Uh, this isn't a base coat. So it's literally just on the highest pieces. So just there. You have to have a solid line either, just just a little bit here and there, a little bit there. Should make it a little bit brighter. like that. A little bit on the strapping there. Just like that. Possibly a bit too strong there. Try to blend it in a little bit. Same on the other side of the strap. Okay, I'm just doing that on the edges on all of the brown that you did previously. A little bit more. Make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, next thing is I'll probably go with the silvers. So I'm going to go with quite a basic silver initially. It's a bit of GW bolt gun metal. load up the brush a bit more than you did previously because you want to now cover all the blade. Let's do the base coat first. 
nice coverage and when it's dry give me a second coat make sure you thin your paint slightly apply two thin coats at least there is quite a lot of detail in these blades so make sure your paint is nicely thinned don't take any definition away lots of little notches and chips and dinks in the blade so I'm going to cover the blade the buckle and any of the cog symbols any blades and piercings and whatnot. I'll be back in a sec okay so for the silver I'm going to put a no oil wash in the center there bring up some detail and what I've been doing with the blades so far if I can get some light on there is dropping a bit of a dark blue wash in there and when it dries I will edge highlight it and dry brush it leaving the dark blue in the recesses so I'll show you what I mean so just getting more detail from this by dropping the no oil in there possibly a bit too much so I will bring a bit out once that's dry I will dry brush get a bit more contrast bring out some detail on there Right, and then I'll go with the blue. So with the blue that I was using is, give it a bit of a shake, some of this Drakenhof Nightshade. And just putting a little bit on the blades. It's gonna seem a bit extreme at the moment. When it dries, it will A, calm down a little bit, and I'll also use probably some Necron compound or something, a nice dry brush silver, to pick out all the details. Just a little bit there as well, on the lower side. Just like that. I'll come back when that dries because I don't want to dry brush it when it's even remotely wet. Let's see how I get on. Next I'm going to use a bit of Retributor Armour, which is one of the better goads, I think, from uh, Citadel. And it just do the shoulder pad. Now, could have gone all silver, but I wanted to have a little bit of an antique gold look. So we'll start off with this colour, and then we'll start making it look a bit rougher, older, aged. So, I want two coats of this as per usual, but especially because metallics. I find it don't cover massively well. So the first coat, I'm just going to do the, the basic part. The next coat, I'm going to take it to the edge a bit more. Just like that. The shoulder pad here. Continues here. A lot of small detail in these miniatures. 
some is a bit hard to tell what's what. That's pretty much covered that. A bit more there. Okay, and then just on the armor around the knee, I want that to be gold as well. There's a bit more just there. Like I said previously, it might be better to do sub assembly and paint these miniatures because there's so many little fiddly bits. Okay, when that dries, I'll put a second coat on. And then the starting, the weathering, and the aging of the metal, I'll probably put a Agrax shade on the gold and bring it back a little bit in the recesses. And see what it looks like from there. Okay, once all that's dry, you want to dry brush your silver. You also want to edge highlight in a few places to make it look brighter. So. One of my favourite silvers, which I don't think they make anymore, is the old mithril silver. So basically the brightest silver you can find, and give it a damn good shake, it is a few years old. Uh, that's the kind of colour I'm talking about, the brightest silver you can find. So, just a little bit. Getting it to a point. This stuff's quite thin in a way, so I'm not going to water it down. And all I want to do is just catch a little bit here and there, make it a little bit brighter. So, get a bit closer to the camera and show you what I mean. Literally just on the highest point. Where you think the light would hit. See what I'm doing there? Just making it a bit brighter on the highest points. So the same thing on this little symbol here. These little dots. Like that. So you don't think it makes it like a difference? It really does. So just building it up. Brightest point there, brightest point there. That's a nice little line there I'm going to follow. The top half of it. Just like that. So in the darker recesses, you wouldn't have the light. <clears throat> so just pick it up like that. A little bit here, probably be a bit shiny too. Just like that. And the top of the blade, that'd be nice and shiny, wouldn't it? A little bit of light there as well. These old knives. Just 
to the highest part of the curve maybe. Just brings it out just that little bit. And when it comes to the dry brush, the dry brush on this blade, so remember I put a blue wash on it here. What I'll do is get the old trusty makeup brush. Washing that brush out. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting some Necron compound. Now this is a dry paint. You don't have to use a dry paint. You uh, you can just get a little bit of your silver, dab it on your palette, um, and just work it in until it's dry. So we'll have a go with the dry paint. Just to see what we think. So you could use that there, put it on maybe some kitchen towel or something, work it, dry out the brush a little bit. So we think. What I'm going to try to do here is pick up all the high areas. So from the edge of the blade, making sure not too much on there. So work on my thumb a bit just to show you. So it should just pick up all the high areas like that. So working from the edges of the blade, edges of the blade. Just like that. Possibly still a bit too much on there. Work it off. So the idea is the blue tint will stay in all the recesses. The shiny metal being the top bit, so a little worn sections, something like that. Not too heavy, but you can see all the little, little notches and chinks taken out there. Put a bit more on there because I like that to shine a bit. Okay, same on the underside of the weapon. Just dragging it from the edges. Never not too heavy. Less is always more, you can always add more. Like that. Okay. Okay, next, the bone. So the mask. Any bone hanging down. Some of these models have little skulls and things hanging down from the waist. Now I start with classic good old bleach bone. Now, less is more. I'll start picking out the highest levels of the skull first. I don't know what the hell that was outside, but something's just gone bang. You know, one of these days, when we all have loads of money, because there's so much money to be made online, isn't there, from doing hobby-related stuff, we can have our own studio, soundproofed, no noises from the outside world. All you're going to do is just donate us thousands of pounds and it'll be fine. And then we can give you top quality videos. Okay. So 
what I'll do initially, wait till it dries and put a second layer on that. Like I said, if there's any scoes hanging off from the belts and things like that, also do those at the same time. Okay, the next thing I like doing is using a bit of Agrax, your trusty old Agrax I use pretty much on everything these days, just to put a couple of blends on this dude's beak. It's not very much. You start off really small. So just cover like that. So the first time, it's not very strong at all. Just a little bit there. A little bit there. Now we wait for that to dry. We apply it slightly further down. And keep adding another layer further down, another layer further down. It should end up looking something like this. So on this beak here, You can see it's quite dark near the tip. So I'll keep doing that. Once it dries, I'll add another layer. And that's what I've got so far. While that's drying, we'll use some sterling mud to apply to the base using an older brush. Something like this. Still fairly pointy, but nothing high quality. We'll just add it around the base. So, work it on. Doesn't have to be neat, doesn't have to be smooth. That's the idea of sterling mud. Because it looks like, yay, that's why right, you guessed it, mud. So, I will make the base nice and lumpy. I always like to put a little bit of this on the base, or any base that I'm doing really, um, even before I prime it as well, because then it gives some texture to the base. You can see I've already done it already before I even primed it, because I don't like perfectly smooth bases. I want to look knobbly, more lifelike. Wipe off any excess off the lip, like so. And apply some more. You can always put this stuff on really, really thick and make a nice lump. So when this stuff dries, it looks like mud. And mud is really smooth. Plenty on there. And when it dries, I will dry brush that to give it a bit more depth. And put another layer on the beak. So the next part of my base that I wanted to use was Valhalla and Blizzard. Now you can always stick a grass tuft or something to the base as well to break it up a little bit before putting that on. So that's exactly what I'll do next. And then from there I'll apply some Valhalla and Blizzard. Now usual thing with basing materials, don't use a decent brush. So get a good scoop of the Valhalla and Blizzard, drop it on the table. <laughs> Just apply randomly. Now I don't want to cover the whole of the base with the snow. Just a little bit here and there. The snow's melting or something. Like so. And I want to 
apply a little bit on top of the grass as well. Just a little bit. Mark it in a little bit there. Now I like to use black on the edges of my bases because I believe it frames them. But you can use whatever colour you like. And I'll suggest the whole of your army or gang is based in the same way. So they all fit in quite nicely. So the fine touches I've done the detail are on the hair, the black hair. I've just done some extremely dark edge highlights just to pick it out a little bit. And you can push this as much as you want. Uh, the Corvus Cabal was only nine models, so you don't have to batch paint and rush it. You can put as much time as you want into it. What I've strived to do is knock out each one of the models, should take about an hour. But you can push it as far as you want, you can put some bare edge highlights there. Maybe dry brush it and bring it up a bit more. If you want the skulls to pop a little bit, I've put a little bit on the eyebrow and skull, a little bit on the cheekbone of skull white. A few little cracks in the skull, and it goes to bleach bone, and then it goes to skull white. I mean, you can push it a bit more if you wish. Okay, uh, what I've done next is on the wooden handle, of the weapon, I've painted it white because what I want is a light ish wood, not a dark wood. This is a lot of dark colours already on this miniature. So I want something like um, I don't know, silver birch kind of looking. So I will put an agrax over the top. When it dries, it's got the hint of brown. I'd be in too full on. That's very, very light covering. It might need a second coat. I don't want to put it on too heavy. Try and make it look too brown because there's a lot of dark colours on this miniature. That's the way I've painted it anyway. Just around the hand where it meets the handle. A bit more maybe on the top there. Okay. So that's the basic miniature. You might want to do a few more edge highlights on the silvers to bring up a bit more. That's it. I haven't gone black with the leaves and leaves, feathers. Because um, I thought it was too boring, so I put a little bit of colour to it. But I was always told bases and faces, so the skull pops out quite a bit, and the base should be quite bright as well. Everything else is a little vanilla, but that's the kind of scheme I thought. As ravens are quite dark, I wasn't going to go crazy bright colours. But that's it, that's how I paint my Corvus Cabal. Thank you very much for watching. Hit like and please subscribe. Cheers guys. See you next time.